Hi mom, welcome back to Learning Physics with me. This week's activity, we're going to be rolling a car down a ramp. We've already learned all the physics that we need to understand this concept. The only thing I'm going to introduce are two new forces and we're going to introduce an angle. The two new forces are the normal force and friction force. Friction force is easy. It's the force acting opposite of the direction of the object. So if the object is moving this way, friction force is moving this way. And normal force is also easy. Normal force is everywhere. It's acting on us right now. Normal force is the force that's acting opposite of gravity, basically. So when your feet are on the ground, normal force is acting upwards on your feet. It's the reason why you don't fall through the floor or fly up through the air. Gravity and normal force perfectly cancel out. We're gonna see how adding an angle affects the normal force. First, I'm gonna show you all the math that's gonna go into it, and then we're gonna plug it all into the code. Even though I'm gonna show you all of the calculations that the computer's gonna do, the truth is we really don't have to do any of these calculations ourselves. If we correctly plug these formulas into the code, the code will do all of the calculations for us, but it's good to get a sense of what it's actually doing. Here we have it. I've drawn a free body diagram of the cart rolling down the ramp. And these arrows here represent all the forces that are acting on the cart as it rolls down the ramp. The normal force is what I was talking about earlier is represented by this arrow here. Friction force is represented by this arrow here since it's rolling this way down the ramp. And this triangle here is just an extension of those arrows. It helps us better calculate and visualize what's actually happening. Because with a perfect right triangle, we can use Sokotoa, which is what all this mumbo jumbo is over here. So a few things to note before we get started with all the calculations. The right triangle, the hypotenuse here on this side is made up of M times G. That's the gravitational force. And it's always acting directly down towards the center of Earth. So we have the hypotenuse and we have this measured angle here. We should be able to find out every aspect of that right triangle. Every aspect of that right triangle are the forces that are acting on the cart. Also written here, we know that all the forces in the perpendicular aspect add up to get zero. The reason that adds up to get zero is because the cart is not either, it's not falling through the, the ramp and it's also not flying through the air. So those must be equal. And what are the forces in the perpendicular aspect? Well, one is the normal force, and the other is this negative mass times gravity times cosine of theta. And theta, if you're not familiar, is just the angle of the ramp. You might be asking, why is it cosine theta? Well, that's because Sokotoa tells us that it's the adjacent and the hypotenuse of this angle. Since we know this angle, we set it equal to the adjacent side, which is this side, that's the perpendicular side, and the hypotenuse, which is mass times gravity. So with this simple calculation here, we can find both forces in the perpendicular aspect. And once we know that, force of normal force plus the forces in the uh, perpendicular aspect equals zero. Another thing to note, we know that all the forces in the parallel aspect, that's this aspect, on the ramp, we know that all of those forces must equal mass times acceleration. Remember, force equals mass times acceleration. So, the forces in the per perpendicular plus the friction force, which are the two forces acting on the car in the parallel direction of the ramp, we know that that will equal the mass of the car times its acceleration. And we can get its acceleration from the graph after we video it. And using Sokotoa again, we can get the parallel forces by multiplying mass times gravity times sine theta. And the friction force is also easy. We take the normal force and multiply it by the friction coefficient. And since we have all of these variables except for the friction coefficient, we can find the friction coefficient by plugging in all those variables. Let's find the normal force. Normal force, we can use this equation here, which we already talked about down here, we set the normal force plus the parallel, or the perpendicular force, sorry, equal to zero, and that's exactly what I did here. So just a little algebra, if we find the normal force to be 2.44 newtons. Now once we have the normal force, we can plug it into this equation here, which is just what I wrote right here, the parallel force plus the friction force equals mass times acceleration. Plug all of that in here, and we get 
the drag coefficient. Now we have every variable that we need to plug into the computer model. And the computer model should output the same exact thing that we see when we videoed the actual cart rolling down an actual ramp. Here we have the video of the actual cart rolling down the actual ramp. We have measured the angle and it's present there. You probably can't really see it well, but it's five degrees. As she releases the cart, it rolls down the ramp and picks up some velocity, but there's also that drag force. And we calculated all this and we're putting it into the code. And the graph that's shown to the right is the velocity in that X direction. The X direction is just parallel to the ramp. And this number here, when the cart stops, is what we are gonna to compare to the computer code. Here we have this week's code. Uh, everything's pretty much set up exactly the same and it has always been with the, a, a few additional steps. Like theta, this week, like I said, we're dealing with an angle. So we have the angle of five degrees. We just put radians in front of it so that the computer calculates it in radians. Gravity, which is always 9.8. And then right here, the mu kinetic, which is 0.02. That's what we calculated. We calculated 0 0.0195, but 0 0.02 is close. Um, then the mass. It's 0.25, it's how much the cart weight. Then we put the uh, initial starting positions, uh, initial starting velocity, which we all get from, we get all this from the graph. And down here, we will make the cart, make the graphs, and the time we want to start is 0.433 because that's the point in the video where we had good data, and that's where we got all those other numbers from. The time step, which is the delta T that the computer is gonna update uh, in the while loop, it's going to update every 0 0.01 seconds, so it will be very accurate. Here is the while loop, the time, I want it to run until 0.16 seconds because that is when the video stopped and that's the last data point that we have from the video of the actual cart rolling down the actual ramp. And we are going to compare the velocity at that time with the velocity that this computer model will come up with. And here's what all we did on the whiteboard, the cart weight, cart normal, and cart friction, and cart force. These are all the forces that we talked about, uh, which is weight, the normal force, and friction. And remember when I said we don't actually have to do all those calculations ourselves because look, we plugged them all in right here. And the computer is gonna do all of those cosines and sines for us. So we didn't actually have to do it. And moving on to, these are the graphs. The time is gonna be updated, you know, time versus, time plus uh, the time step, which is that 0 0.01. And that's it there. And let's run the code and see what happens. There we had it roll down. It ended, this is the position of the cart, which actually does match up with the real life. In 1.6 seconds, the cart rolled about a little over a meter. It was about right, right around there. And that matches up with what we saw in the video. And this is the one that we're actually gonna do the comparison. So at the bottom here is 1.6, that's the time. And the red line is the cart's position. It looks like it went a little in between one meter, or uh, I'm sorry, one meter per second and 1.3 meters per second. Around, yeah, about 1.1314. Well, I, I actually, down here at the bottom, I forgot, I told it to print cart velocity. So let's actually go to the bottom and see. Okay, 1.4, 1.14. Now let's go back and look and see if that matches the, the graph that we saw in the real video. Here is that graph that we saw earlier from the real video and this, this is the velocity versus time and we're comparing it now to what we saw in the code. If you look here, I have it highlighted at that 1.6 seconds where the video ends, the velocity is 1.14. And that's exactly what we saw on the code. So this worked so out very we well. Couldn't be did all happier the calculations with the result. On the whiteboard. We saw how it actually works, how we can calculate these things by making a right triangle. And we 
took what we calculated, plugged it right into the computer model. The computer model spat out exactly what we saw in real life, in the real life video. So it really works and I uh, hope you learned something. Thank you for watching.